My name is Aletha, and I wanted to teach you how to turn a simple piece of plywood into a real work of art. Um, my family grew by three when we adopted three little girls, and we needed a much bigger table. And I searched and searched for a table that would fit in this area really well and then to no avail. So um, we decided, I decided, to put a tabletop on my old existing table to make it to make it considerably larger to have room for all of us. And I didn't want just a plain piece of plywood. So I got a good quality finished piece of plywood and laid out a um, stained glass window pattern, made my own patterns, and um, laid them out on the table, traced the patterns, and then used different, kind, different colors and kinds of wood stain and stained the pattern onto the table and then um, lacquered over it. And this is the finished product, and I want to teach you how to make it. Now, I've done this same thing on um, a door that I'll show you and on a bridge that my son assembled and on the floor in my old house. I stained the shape of Texas on the floor and a stained glass window pattern and it all turned out real good. I'm real proud of it. And today I'll be starting on a new project which is a much bigger project which will be a, uh, refurbishing a wall, an out outside wall at a nonprofit ministry that I run and doing the wood, um, the stained glass pattern on it. So let's get started. And Well first let me show you some of the things that I've already done. Okay, like I said, this is a plain finished piece of plywood with a simple frame built here around the edge of it, built around the edge of it, and it also has a frame underneath that causes it to stay in place, that keeps it um, in place on top of the old tabletop that was here. And if I ever need a smaller table, I can just shrink back down. But um, the thing that I wanted to show you was how I did the stained glass window pattern all the way around the uh, table edge with the big um, finished piece in the middle and I think it turned out really beautiful. I love the table and I also love with the different colors of wood stain you can tie in any chairs with it and it's no big deal to match chairs. This is just an old door that I stained at another stained glass window pattern on. I really like the stained glass window patterns. I like stained glass and this is an easy way to do kind of stained glass work but without the without the glass. So I thought this one turned out kind of nice too. And it really dressed up the door. Instead of it just being a plain type door, it looks a lot nicer. This is a real neat um, bridge that you can order from Walmart.com from a, for a real reasonable price. I think it was pine. It was a real light colored wood and it stood out in front of the house. It just, it, it didn't look right here at all. It didn't blend with my house at all. And so I used some different wood, different types of wood stain and stained on a really neat pattern on it and then um, my son assembled it it comes unassembled so he assembled it and then I used the different colors of wood stain and I think it turned out real pretty I, lo I love it we had a problem with drainage in our front yard and with the bridge the water drains away under it so we don't have the issue anymore and I um, coated it with um, tongue oil finish First step would be choosing your pattern I chose I've got lots of these patterns but you can make your pattern from anything you can make print it off something in the, off the internet and enlarge it or create your own pattern, which is what I had done on this um, table here. Um, so the first step would be to choose your pattern and where you want your pattern to lay on the wood, how you want it to lay. Like, do you want much of a frame around it or how do you want to do it? And for me, since I said I'm using this pattern, first thing I needed to do was find the center line, the center point on both sides of the wood. So I just measured off the, the wood and um, put my little mark on both sides where the center is. Any drawing that you do like this on the wood, you do need to do it in pencil because even though it seems like it would be light, when you go to lacquer over it, all these extra marks will really show, so you don't want to be leaving a lot of extra marks. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put my pattern. Well, the way I've decided to do this pattern on this wood is I'm going to make two big, huge wooden panels on both sides of an outside um, door, and at the top and bottom of both patterns, top and bottom of both of those panels. I want this pattern to be like this and then stained again above it where it makes it flip. It'll be real pretty like that I think on both sides of the door. So I'm going to tape it down real fast and transfer the pattern down onto the wood. I'm going to use carbon paper. And you can get 
um, stained glass window patterns like these, just cram packed full of great patterns, and take the patterns and modify it however you'd like to modify it. If you look on the, let me see if he's got any pictures in color. Yeah, there's some of the pictures in color. So you could really do it with any colors of wood stain. I mean, you could even use actual colors, not just shades of brown. And that would be beautiful in wood. That would make a really pretty table. This is another pretty one with flowers, but there's all types of books out there. I'm sure there's easier, cheaper ways. marks, it won't erase off your board very easily, so you really don't want a bunch of stray marks. You really want to stay right on the line, and then when you stain it, you'll cover those up, but if you get off your line, if you get off your lines, I don't know if I did this line already or not, when, if you get off your lines, and it's an area where you're going to get, leave the, with the natural color, then that's a mark that's going to stay. Just keep it taped down. Don't let your pattern move. And that way, if there's something you didn't get, you can just come back and get that one apart. Ta-da! I missed one part right there. There's something missing right in the middle. I gathered together my wood stains that I have around the house and didn't go buy anything new or anything. I'm just going to use what I've got and um, I gathered them together, stirred them up good because some of them have sat around for a couple of years, painted them all on a sample piece of wood and wrote the name of what each one is by it so I can keep track of which exactly was which colors. Now some, a lot of times when I do this, I do it with wood stain markers because they give you more of a precision line, but a wood stain, stain marker is not going to do the scale that we need to do here. So um, with these seven panels, so I'm going to stay away from the wood stain markers and markers and go with things that I can buy in larger quantity. And you want to make sure up front that you've got enough of that color to do the whole project. So if you're thinking like I've got a big can of that and a little can of that, when you're choosing your pattern and what's going to be what, keep that in mind so that you don't get to the very end and run out of something and then have a hard time matching that color again. Okay. Darken my oak just a little bit and I like it a lot more. It was too close to the clear, it wasn't going to stand out. So I've got some nice distinguished colors. Um, I have the ebony. Brick red is that the deck would finish. I'm calling it brick red. Walnut and then the darker oak and clear. So I'm going to alternate the colors around nice. I want to keep the eye focused on the center of my pattern more. So I'm going to use my darker colors there and then come out to lighter colors out here and then I'll have the wood frame around the edge which I'll draw in last. So I put ebony, brick red, walnut. I'm not using, it's kind of hard on patterns. You don't want to put the same two colors side by side. So using three in this main part of the pattern, mostly three, is going to alternate real nicely. Ebony, brick red, walnut, and then walnut, ebony, brick red, walnut, and just altering, alternating around like that. So I'm going to continue the right to match what I did on the left. Brick red, ebony, and I decided when I made that oak just a little bit darker like that, I decided on these outer panels here, I'm going to alternate between um, oak and clear and not just leave them all clear like I had done on this table here. So I'll go ahead and mark that. Let's see. Um, oak, shadow, it's okay. Clear, oak, clear. Okay, I think we've got it all marked. Now, I'm ready to pull this one off. And 
and start staining it. No, I think I'll trace the pattern on my other half first. So I'll stop the video, go ahead and trace the pattern on my other half, and then we'll stain it all again, stain it all the same time. Okay, I want to just give you an update of how it's going. Um, I took the same pattern and traced it on this side, and I'm going to make the center real dark and the outer kind of light, and I'm thinking about whether or not to put a border around the edge. I think it would finish it off nicely to put a border around the edge. So I've decided on this one to go with doing the line. Normally, I do the lines like, well, all different ways, but normally like on this one here, I did the lines in a lighter color and then stained the, um, inside the lines and, and um, made the lines go away. But on this one, I want it to look more like a stained glass window where the lines are actually like the, uh, met the metal work. The okay, look how pretty it looks. Uh, tickle pink. I've darkened in all my lines. Cane is the word I was trying to think of earlier. I was trying to make the dark lines look like the cane on a stained glass window, the metal that's between the glass. So what I'm going to do now is lay my pattern out where I figured what's, where I decided what was going to be the walnut, what's the brick red, what's the ebony and the oak and the other color, and clear. Um, and I'm going to lay that out and I'm going to start on staining. Now one of the biggest things during this is you don't want to drip. So I think I'll get a piece of wax paper before I go further. Okay, I'm just going to cover the areas that I am not working on. I already flicked that right in the thing. And maybe that will help. So I'm going to start on, I decided to start on my darkest color. You don't want much stain on, the, on your brush because it's going to bleed. Doing it with the markers, with the wood stain markers, is actually a lot easier because it doesn't suck it away and bleed as much. But doing a large area like this, trying to do it with markers, you're going to end up with marker lines and unevenness. So I'm not going to mess with that. So let's just start right in. Ebony right here. I'm going to start in the middle because it is going to bleed it. It's going to suck it away. That's why you don't want very much on your brush. in a bowl, unless it's already in a pretty small size thing, put it in a bowl on a plate and that way it doesn't have as much chance of splattering and spilling around. Here's a little update on how it looks now um, with the black, with the ebony almost completely done. I think it's coming along real nice. Just take it slow and don't put too much on the brush or you'll regret it and you can't undo it. Okay, I'm ready to move on to the next color. So I took all my instruments and washed them off good and I'm ready to go with the brick red. And I'll just start marking around what's going to be the um, brick red and keep my pattern nice and handy dandy so that um, I won't mess up. If you mess up, you're in trouble. So on the outer edge, I'm going to just alternate between that ebony and this brick red. And it's really kind of a thick stain. Um, so I'm going to put it on a little bit, a little bit thin, I think. I don't want it to cover over my black lines, but I do want it to cover over the bleeds. As you can see, it's coming right along. Um, I've got the brick red done and the ebony all done, and now it's time to. Here is the finished project. Product. It's not dry all the way, but I think it's about finished. Don't think I should mess with it anymore. Just leave it right the way it is. And as you can see, it turned out really nice, really, really nice. So that's just a real simple stained glass, stained glass pattern, doubled over, and stained in with different kinds of wood stain. I think it turned out just beautiful.